What's up, world? I'm a determined black man, John Jay, and I am a determined black man. And today, as usual, I just want to reach out to each and every one of you all that listen to the sound of my voice. And first of all, I want to wish you all a, a very pleasant day. I hope that you all continue to enjoy the blessed day that you have had. And give all praise to the Most High. So, I want to first start off by saying that. And then secondly, we're going to get into the topic. Topic that I want to speak on today. Um, you know, I kind of be a little all over the place, but I stay within the boundaries of the community in which I have been raised in the community in which I am familiar with the black community, the brown community, um, the poverty community. So today, um, not much different from any other message that I've had, but just to reiterate See, um, this is 2021. I haven't did many videos this year. I've uh, been a little reluctant to because I felt like um, I wasn't getting getting the response that I felt like was necessary or that I should. But then I was encouraged by some other people to keep going. You know, some of those that, that are, are listening are aware of uh, what I'm trying to do or what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, they say keep going, John. They say keep going, uh, Determined. It's... It's, uh, it's, it's a great thing, even when you don't have the support that you that you are seeking. Um, honestly, I don't have the monetary support um, as well as uh, the, 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 the mental support or response or feedback from, from the people that, that I am targeting when I speak. Um, my people, people that look of my, my skin tone, people that are going through some of the things that I've been through. Uh, in the hood, you know what I'm saying? You know how we do it. You know the things that we're accustomed to. Um, you know the thing, the, the, the environment that we we are raised in. Uh, most of us, anyway, that have been um, accustomed to the uh, poverty-stricken areas, um, and, and and really haven't achieved much, um, anything substantial. You know what I'm saying? That that that, that would help elevate our community. So. That's where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to get us to think on the same accord. I'm trying to get us to be on the same page. And that's how we're going to start to get some track hold. That's how we're going to get our feet wet. And, 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 you know, that's that's the beginning of, of, of growth. Like, in order to, 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 to build, you must lay a firm foundation. So, today I just wanted to lay a firm foundation for you all. I wanted to give you all some nuggets that maybe you can take back, spread the word. Um... I'm just one man, I'm just one mouth, I'm just one voice. And that's why I try to use this platform to actually um, make my voice be heard a little louder. And um, so if you're feeling what I'm saying, if, you, if you're if digging uh, the Determined Black Man, please like, share, subscribe to my page, and um, give me some feedback, comment, jump in the comment section. I'll respond to any of your comments. I'll, I'll go through there and I'll try to respond to all of them, if you will. Um, because I think that there are a lot of questions and, and, and there are some answers out there for those questions that need to be answered. And so um, if I can't answer them, I will um, research. I'll do my research. I'll reach out to people that I feel like may be a little more indulged in this thing than I am and have a little more um, a little bit more meat that they can give you so that you can feed on and, and give you the strength that you need to be able to go on to succeed and be a success. Um and that's what I want. I want us to all be a success. I don't want us to be individuals as we are now. You know, we have been created and molded and shaped into the people that we are today. This is not who we originally are. We've been told that we we all came up. We are ancestors. We we, we are descendants of of slaves. That's what we was we, we were, we've been told pretty much our whole lives, even in school or uh, social studies. They they, they 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 stressed it. You know, y'all were slaves. Y'all came. You know, your ancestors came over here on slave ships, twenty million strong, or a week, or however you want to put it. Uh, but twenty million plus, um, and uh, you know, some didn't make it, and others did. And you know, they they give us the whole rundown. But what you never hear is that you, you know possibly we were here long before slavery. Never do you hear that we are indignant of this land. Never do you hear that it's a possibility that you are not just a black man. Possibly you are a red man as they considered us or called us. 
um, black Indian, you know. Um, but that's why I'm here, and that's why there are other avenues that you can take now to, to, to do the research and find out for yourself. But we have been so indoctrinated in, 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 in uh, this stuff has been planted on us for so long, you know, from your mom, your mama's mama and your mama's mama mama, you know what I'm saying? It's a systematic thing that has taken its course for so long that we are accustomed to it and we think that this is the right way to be. Like we think it's okay to hate on each other and want to actually kill each other for 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 um, if you know somebody spoke on your name or you know somebody took a shot at somebody you know or somebody you love or somebody inside the same set that you claim you know we wouldn't go out here and, and gun down a whole neighborhood kill everything anything kids children women everything you know what I'm saying don't matter our lives don't even matter to ourselves that's sad to me. Because as black people, if you look back at our history and, and throughout the 50s and the 60s and the 70s when we were, we had no other choice but to depend on each other, we were a strong people. We were the Hewitt Newtons. We were the um, Marcus Garvin. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that we lost our way once we started gaining some weight. Once we started getting a foothold or what they allowed us to think as a, as a foothold in this society. And, and thinking that we were gaining some success, um, we backslid. We forgot about how much we had already gone through to get where we were, you know. But as the old people always say, don't never forget where you come from because you're going to always be where you come from. You're going to always remember where you come from as long as you can remember. But you'll never know where you're going. So don't forget where you come from because where you come from could very well be where you land, where you end up back at. And if you if you forget about it, or you 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 crap take a crap on all the people in, from your past, just because you elevate a little bit higher, or you get a little bit further ahead of them, you know, for the present time. You know what I'm saying momentarily. And I'm I'm hoping that if you are doing things the right way, that you continue to grow and continue to be successful. I'm not saying that I wish that anybody that's grown above what we used to. That they somehow get snatched back. No, I commend you. As long as you're doing it the right way and you're not doing it like crabs in a bucket and trying to step on another crab to get to the top. You know what I'm saying? As long as you we, we building that foundation and stacking those blocks from there, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm in I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. So, um, black people, we need to first of all know that we've been lied to. If I, if any of you all have ever watched um Malcolm X or read the books by read the book by Alice Hedy, you know, um, that was a that was a famous line in the book. Uh, I mean, that was a famous line in the book, and that was a famous line also in the movie that people oftentimes back when that movie in the nineties when the movie was very popular, they would quote. You know, what I'm saying either to get your hands out my pocket type, or get your hands out my pocket. That was right before the assassination of Martin Luther King. Or you were here on you were, or you can remember in one of Martin Luther. I mean, excuse me, Malcolm X. I, uh, retract that Malcolm X I'm speaking about Malcolm X um, by any means necessary um, but there was a there was a statement that he made um, basically about how we've been lied to how we've been bamboozled how we've been hoodwinked you know what I'm saying um, Planet Rock didn't land you know we didn't land on Planet Rock Planet Rock landed on us okay so basically what he was saying he was telling you what he was depicting with that message was that we've been lied to We've been we've been told that we were slaves and all of us uh, look alike, come from the same um, genetic makeup or whatever. We all come from Africa. This da 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 da. da you know what I'm saying? But it was all strategic in its formation so that we can feel less than what we truly are. So we can feel less important. We can feel less. Um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, competent. We can feel less competent in, 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 in making any type of decisions because we feel left out already. We feel like we we are displaced because we don't have a true identity in this country. Um, we are identified as blacks. We identified as African-Americans, um, brown, you know, other um but what we but in, in 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 that you know what I'm saying confusion, and when you have confusion, lies disorder. You know what I'm saying, and when you are disorderly, then you become 
um, catastrophically uh, distraught and, and, and displaced. You know what I'm saying? And in 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 doing that, you start to um, you build up a certain level of hatred. You build up hatred. You build up. Um, your heart is disheartened. You become hard at the heart. You don't. You don't know how to love anymore. You become cold. You know. And so that's that's where the matters that they presented to us hundreds of years ago, and it, it, it trickled down throughout the years, and now it's not even evident to us because we're blind to the fact that it still exists and the hate is still there for us, but because they have. Like I said, molded us into what, into this mindset that we have now, and, and we hating each other on such a high level that we can't even focus on the real enemy because we so focus on one another because they have made us and led us to believe that we are our own worst enemy. And I have even said it ourselves, myself, we are our own worst enemy. But it's only because we have been led to believe that, and now. After you after you think something for so long or you speak it for so long, the next thing is to manifest itself. So, you know, people always told you, be careful what you say. It's power in the tongue, you know. And they know that because it creates energy. In this world, it's nothing but energy. Energy is what is what moves things. Energy is what, you know. That, that feeling you get when you walk into a room and you can tell that everybody been talking about you. Or that feeling you get when, you know, um, you walk into the house that of the or the home of people that you know love you. You know, it's a feeling that come up on you when you know you in, in, in comfort. You know what I'm saying? When you're in a place of comfort opposed to being in a place of, dis, uh, of, of disheartenedness. You know what I'm saying? A place of uh, frustration. A place of hate. So, uh, first thing we need to do is we need to break through and realize that we've been lied to so that we can find our true identities. And that's where to start. Because if you're confused at who you really are, then how can you, how can you elevate what you are if you don't know who you are? You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I think that's a war that's going on, a raging war that's going on inside of each and every one of us. Our spirits are tugging, trying to tell us, look, you need to f figure out who you really are first. You know what I'm saying? These people done lied to you. Realize that. See, that's when you become woke, when you first realize that, hey, I've been lied to. You know what I'm saying? Religion has been used to manipulate me and control me and enslave me. Now it's time for me you know, and I'm not speaking down on anybody's religion. As I tell y'all frequently, whenever I come on here, I don't even talk about religion. You know, I don't get in debt when it comes to religion. Because I tell you, I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual guy. I'm a spiritual man. I'm spiritually guided. I ask God to guide my tongue. I ask God to guide my mind. The most high God. I'm spiritually led. So when I speak of religion, I don't, I'm not religious because religion has... Um, it has strongholds. It's, um, you know, it's an indoctrination. So it, it, it tends to plant seeds in your head and lead you to believe certain things. You know what I'm saying? And if you feel a certain way, it's probably because you've been, in, you know, this has been installed in you or, you know, instilled in you. It's not necessarily because this is what's real. And they know the effects they know that if I put this in a book and I tell them this what it is, you know, they're gonna believe it. And over the year, over the years, they're gonna receive it and manifest it. Okay, so let's figure out who we are. I'm not knocking anybody's religion. I just I'm not being on religion myself. It's too many religions out here to say that there's only one God. I don't think that you have to be a religious person to make it into heaven or paradise or the place of peace that God has pre prepared before us. I don't think that you have to be a religious person. I just think that you have to be in tune with your spirit and your soul. Get your soul right and be in tune with your spirit. See, when they took us out of our, when they took us, okay, first of all, like I said, we've been lied to because um, if you do your DNA, your ancestors uh background 
then you'll probably find out that you were indignant of this land because only a small percentage of people came over here on, on, on slave ships from Africa. For one, how can we find traces and, and pieces of the of Noah's Ark, but we can't find any traces of any ships large enough to carry the magnitude of slaves that they said that came over to America? And in, it, if so, then that, that length of travel without the proper um, gear, because you would have to travel through all different types of uh, storms and weather systems and food and medicine, I just don't think that 20 million slaves would have made it to America. I think that that number has been figmented, figmented so that we can think less of ourselves and keep us in this wilderness wondering, you know what I'm saying? Because their whole intentions was to seek and destroy, just as the devil, to seek and destroy, okay? They saw that we already had... Uh, we were light years ahead of any anything else. You know, we already we were already created. We were already pioneers. You know, and so I think that a lot of things were stolen from us and recreated so that they can attach their names and headings on it, but with our ideas, with our thoughts, because we had it had already been proven. We had already they had already seen that we can build pyramids. They had already seen that we can, you know, we knew how to cultivate the land and to irrigate the land and to use the land to produce what we needed. You know, they they already knew that we were we were farmers by nature. They already knew that we were navigators by nature. So they used us. And then they abused us. Know that we've been lied to. We've been told how they have led to our hate for one another. The hate that they have 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 rendered upon us over hundreds of years has led to the self hate that we now have for one another. And that's why we are divided. We divided by colors because many of us are gang affiliated or organization affiliated. And don't get me wrong, I'm not totally against every organization because some of those organizations were founded with the idea of unifying us as a people. But somehow, as everything else goes, it gets twisted. And then it fires back at us. So the things that were meant for the good of us and for the embitterment of us, for the better of us, were turned back on us. And now we face with um, genocide and self-hate beyond measures. Like, we need to stop all this killing, man. We ain't killing nobody but ourselves. The police are already taking us out, you know. This system is set up to take out people of color. How is it that we only make up less than 15% of the entire race in the United States alone? We only make up 15% of the population. But we make up over 40% of the population that's incarcerated in the United States. How is that possible? And nobody has raised an eye. Nobody raised a, a red flag. Nobody nobody said says... This is, this is ludicrous how they've done us. But then when you go back and you look at the Woodrow Wilsons, the Andrew Jacksons, and the, you know, the presidents and the things that they signed into place and how they procreated this thing. Because they knew even if they didn't get to see it in time, their legacy would be, would, you know, or whatever they want to call it, would, 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 would come to some type of manifestation. It would, it would actually, um, you know, serve its purpose. And it has, and it continues to. John Lynch, oh, oh excuse me, Willie Lynch, 
I mean, my norm is Willie Lynch. I'm sorry. I mean, a whole a whole book, a whole letter that you know depicted how he wanted to keep people's minds enslaved more, even more so than their bodies. Because if the mind is enslaved, then the body just follows. The body is just a the body is just a shell. The mind, the brain, is what makes the body go. And so, once they gain a hold of your mind, your body ain't no good. It's going to do whatever the mind tells it to do. So, know that. You know what I'm saying? We need, to, we, need to, we need to grow together. We need to grow back together. Just like you see my hair. When it's wrapped all up tight like that and growing intertwining like that, it grows stronger. It grows longer. That's the same way it is with us in life. When we grow together, we, grow, we bond, and we grow stronger, and we grow longer. We go further, and we go higher. So, no. They some liars. They told us this. They told us that. And we somehow believed it. We, we allowed it to get embedded in our spirits. And now we're seeing the reactions and the effects of what they've caused. Now, they're going to point the finger at us and say that we are animals, you know, and the reason why they're gunning us down because they're afraid of us. But what if we took that same route? As many people of our color that have been hung from trees, ran over by horses and automobiles, and drugged by automobiles and horses, um, decapitated, whipped with whips, cat whips, splitting them, I mean, skin open like watermelon. Just, I mean, horrifying events. And you're telling me we the animals. But you can go in and, and capture people and bring them through hell to get here just to serve you and do what you want to, them to do. Now, all throughout history, there were indentured slaves. There were indentured servants, as they were called. Them. But those type of people were taken well, you know, they were taken care of. They weren't beaten and mistreated like, you know, the slave, the black slave of America. No. No other race of people has been um, um, hated, demised, you know what I'm saying? No other race of people has been through the struggles that, that, that the dark man has in the United States. True enough, if Africans... Africans had white slaves, European slaves, as you want to call them. But they lived right beside each other. They didn't, they didn't, they weren't treated any different than, you know, they weren't treated like animals. We were treated like animals. We were sprayed down in the streets with water holes and attacked by police dogs. You know, they sick the dogs on us just to keep us on the side of one side, from one side of the road to, from the other. That sounds like an animal to me. But yet, we getting gunned down at an alarming rate. Right after that uh, prosecution in, 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 in uh, what was it, Carolina, uh, the Michael Floyd case, Chavin or whatever his name is, not even an hour away, another officer, female officer, gunned down a little teenager, a little black teenager. I mean, this stuff don't mean none of them. They because they feel first of all entitled, and we always hear about white privilege and how is you know, is real in America. It is, and if you speak with some real white people that's gonna be real with you, you know what I'm saying? They'll tell you, yeah. You know, they get stopped at traffic stops. You know what I'm saying? They get, they laugh and get warned. You know, they don't, or they, it's been times, I have been around some of my white buddies, man. They, they talk crazy to the police. Police don't even flinch. Don't even, you know, don't even, matter of fact, he might even try to get them an explanation. But it's because we don't own anything. We don't have our hands tied in anything political. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the power. We not, we don't have as many, uh, uh, politically tied people that, that actually have a stronghold so that they can possibly help maneuver us out of a jam. 
whereas they do. You catch a murder, two charge, you might do 15 years on a, on a, on a, on a um, vehicular homicide or something. You know what I'm saying? Whereas they, they might get all with papers. Something that carries from zero to 40 years, for us, we more likely going to get 15 plus. An offense that carries zero to 40 for them, that get anywhere from zero to four. Look at look, do, Google it. You know what I'm saying? Look at it. Yeah. We go to we go to prison. One out of seventeen of us go to prison. No, I take that back. One out of seventeen of them go to prison. One out of every three black men are incarcerated. Or have been incarcerated at some point in time. They have a jacket on them. So now they can't, you know, unless you fight for your rights, then now you can't bear arms. It's certain uh, crimes that you commit, you can't vote anymore. You know, take away all of those, uh, the, take away those things that give you a fighting chance. I'm not saying that owning a gun is going to just keep you alive, but I'm saying if you can protect your home, protect your livestock, protect your your, your, your fields, from from poachers, poachers, and, and or or people that's wanting to come in and take it from you, because that's what happened back then. You don't think it'll happen again? Who you think control the military? Hmm. If these people wanted to, they can just bag us all off in a cone. National Guard come in here, bag us all off in a cone. Yeah, we think because we got a couple of AKs, one box of shells, we ready to rock. Nah, I don't think so. It's going to be a lot of bloodshed. And yeah, we're going to take out some of them. But it's just like right now, we go to war with China, which is almost inevitable. You know what I'm saying? The way things have been going, the way we've, um, we done crossed them up. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't like that. You know what I'm saying? But if we go to war with China, if it came down to a, a hand-to-hand combat, we lose. It's only 400 million Americans. Totally. And we all divided. We divided by race and all type of stuff. You got almost 2 billion Chinamen. And they together. No matter what they feel towards one another, you will never see it, never know it. When you see them, when you see them pictures or them videos or them, or them guys marching, they synchronize like toys. They look like robots. Why? Because from the age of two, they're militant. They train them. They're disciplined. They have to serve so many years in the military. Each man had to serve so many years in the military. I think it's two, at least two years. But that, with that mindset, you know what I'm saying, militant mindset, I'm not saying that it's all right, but I'm saying that it has put them in the place of control. It has given them uh, the strength that they need to where now they basically are in a position to where they can overthrow our regime. They can overthrow our powers. Because we need them more than they need us. But 50 years ago, we was looking at them laughing like, ha ha, you know. Sending all our work over there because it was cheap labor. And we thought we were doing something. Shutting down all our plants and industries over here. Sending all the stuff over there. Now look at us. Everything closed up. And if China wanted to close their doors on us, guess what? We doomed. We doomed. Already, ecosystem tore up from from all of the um, from all of the um, fossil fuels and all the chemicals and stuff that have been burnt into the atmosphere and smog and all this and that, creating the black ice that has been melting away at the polar caps for years now. Yeah, black ice is created from the smog. When it settles on the ice, it turns it black. Everybody knows. Black attracts heat. Black attracts the sun. When the sun comes out, when it was when it was when it was shining on that white ice, it it was like a mirror. It bounced off. It didn't melt it as fast. It was able to regenerate and stay frozen. Regenerate its coldness. But once it became black, that was like two times or three times or four times the amount of heat. So eventually it drip, 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 
until that cap broke off and now it's gone. This cap broke off and now it's gone. And now we have what we have. Um, holes in, in, our, in our ozone, um, which has created all types of crazy weather systems. And now you're seeing storms that you've never seen before and in times that you've never seen them. So all this stuff that I'm putting out here to you all, it has some correlation. It's not just a lot of jibber jabber. I'm saying all this to help you form a better thought process. And with hope that someday we can all come together, unify, no matter what what set you claim, no matter what side of town you came from, no matter what city you came from, what town. I'm hoping that somehow one day we can all unify and we can stand together. Even if I don't see it with my own two eyes, I hope that we can all stand together someday and say we truly did it. We truly did it. And then just go up from there. You know what I'm saying? Like before this world ends, I hope that the dog man, the black man, the brown man, the red man, I hope that we can all come together on one accord so that we can show ourselves first that we can do it, that we not just haters of one another. Because what I've learned from the Caucasian man, the European man, is that no matter what, no matter how much they don't like each other, no matter how much they don't come from the same neck of the woods, no matter what, they're going to stick together because they know the strength and unity. They know the power of being together rather than being apart. Individuals can't make as much noise as when you join forces together. The noise will be felt from miles and miles away. So we had to stop and ask ourselves, why do we put more trust in a system or in people that have entrapped us and enslaved us ever since the beginning of our coexistence? We put more faith in the system. Black women will go out here and put their, 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 their boyfriends or their, their baby daddies on, 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 on welfare, I mean on, on child support, and they'll go out here and sign up for every nook and cranny of welfare that they can before they would try to come up with a way to support themselves and to support one another. Black men, we will run from our responsibilities before we would go out here and actually try to hit a lick. And I ain't talking about robbing nobody or especially robbing one of your own, your own kind just to put food on the table for the day. We need to create ways that we. this can be an ongoing thing, generational. The same way, okay, we don't even teach our kids about, we don't even teach our kids about, and I said this so many times, I know y'all probably tired of hearing it, but I'm going to always reiterate the, the things that's facts because they, they had, we, we still had, we proven that we aren't, we aren't, um, you know, we're not accepting of it. So until we are accepting of it, I'm going to continue to reiterate but we don't even teach our kids about um, life insurance. That's like one of the easiest transfers of wealth there is. Like, come on now. We all know one day we got to go. That 5 or $10 a month that you spend on cigarettes, beer, or whatever, you could be putting it into a life insurance policy that could be lucrative to your kids or your family members. So when, when, you, when you pass, they'll have money that they not only be able to bury you with, but to continue to grow in a bank account or into some type of investment, put into some type of investment for the future. And then, you know, passed on. When wealth regenerates more wealth, you know what I'm saying? I know you're saying, well, I don't want to die. It, it ain't going to do me no good if I die and leave a million dollars behind. That's the wrong attitude. That's the way they want you to think. That's the poor man's thought process. To only think about himself and when he's alive. But what about your kids and the one you leave behind? Yeah, every man for himself. That's how we think. We got to stop thinking like that. Because together, we are unstoppable. We are a force that can't be reckoned with. And they know this. 
the same reason why they give us the stimulus checks. They know. That's why they call it stimulus. They ain't say personal checks or do what you want with checks. They call them stimulus checks because they know they're going to give that money to you and you're going to give it right back. So it builds a, 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 a false sense of security because a lot of y'all thinking this is going to continue to go on. We're going to continue to get this COVID money. We're going to continue to get this unemployment. We're going to continue to get this and that, this and that. And then next thing you know, now you got to get it how you live. And when you can't afford to keep everything up, guess what? Now you're out in the cold. That makes it easy. Now you're vulnerable. It makes it easy for me to, uh, you know what I'm saying, manipulate you even further. Because now you are even more dependent on it. See? I give you a little money so you can go out here and get in further, you know, get further and further in debt. Get further and further behind. And then I snatch the rug out from up under. And now you're looking around like, who gonna help me? Who gonna help me now? And that's why you fall back into the hands of the government. And eventually you can fall right back into slavery. Whether you want to believe it or not. There's already a form of slavery that's existing. And it's in black and white. It says it. And that's the penitentiary. So that's the penal system. What they call the corrections. Corrections ain't never correcting nobody. If you ain't if you ain't willing to correct yourself behind the walls, you just gonna come out of there even more monstrous and even more hateful than you were when you went in. Because now you've been amongst other idiots. And ignorance, and I'm not saying everybody behind the walls is ignorant. Been there before. I know what it's like. You got very intelligent young men back there. You got you got some real, you know, even some real killers, some real hard hitters, you know what I'm saying? But they got wisdom. And a lot of them were just for their hands was forced to do what they what they did because of the situations they were in, based on the knowledge that they had. But now that they've been sat down, even myself being sat down helped me to realize. The path that I was on, the course that I was on, the destruction that I was headed for. And it helped me to level up. It helped me to get my mind right. It helped me to strengthen myself mentally more than anything, even though I, I worked out every day. I felt like when I left up, my mind was stronger than my body. Because now it's things that I was advocating for. Now I can see that ain't nothing but the devil. I'm advocating for something that's going to bring us down, further down. It hurt us more than it's going to help us. So now my mindset has changed. I had a change of heart. It's okay. People think that when people change, they change up. They that's it's something wrong with that. As long as you change it for the better, that's the best. Ain't nothing wrong with changing because we we all come. Most of us come from struggling. Most of us come from. Um, most of us come from poverty stricken areas so all we know is the struggle all we know is the hate and murder and selling drugs and things that's going to just continue to tear us down as a community over time and, and you know you might have one or two people in the community that come up because you know what I'm saying somebody got to come up if I'm selling all this stuff to the community I mean eventually I got to come up but how is that going to help the whole community when everybody else now sick and on drugs and shit we need to seek knowledge, man. And I hate that a lot of us had to go get sat down behind them walls before we actually come to our senses. And I'm not saying that that was the only place that I seek knowledge because I wasn't a dumb fella before I went to prison, before I was incarcerated. I just made some poor decisions. And that's another thing we need to start installing in our kids. Better decision making. See, we already know white privilege exists. So the table is not even. But it has been set. And so you know what we are already faced with. And no matter how much you want the table to turn or whatever, they'll never turn until we put ourselves in a better position to win. Until we come together and, and, and show the oppressors or the ones that want to hold us down, keep us held down, until we show them that we're not nailed down. We're not a railroad uh, spike. Yet we are. We we we, we are um, very intelligent. Um, we are distinguished people. We need to we need to know that though. You see, we need to not only just hear something that's being said, like I'm speaking to you now. You hear this and you run with it. 
Go do your research and figure out why I'm saying what I'm saying. And so when you speak on this stuff, you can speak on it with confidence. See? That's what they like. They like us to, when we talk and we hold our head down. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. See, that shows a lack of confidence. But when you can look a man in his eye and speak with confidence, that's a sign of strength. And strength is powerful. When you mentally strong, it's powerful because that means that you can't be easily misled. And that means that you can easily lead. You feel what I'm saying? And when you ain't leading our people in the direction that they want you to, they either going to try to hush you up or, 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 or you know what I'm saying? They're going to hush you up by sticking you in a prison cell or they're going to put you in a box and put you in the ground because they don't want us to be enlightened. They want us to stay stupid and stuck in this mud that we stuck in. See? You don't plant, you don't put seeds in mud, you put them in dirt. And you let the water, eventually the water get to, to, to the roots. But if you flood them out, you stick them in that mud, ain't nothing gonna happen. It's gonna kill it. See, we're in the mud, man. We need some, we need some more solid dirt. We gotta put this stuff together. We gotta get more solid. We gotta get more together. And that's what's gonna help us grow. That's what's gonna help that seed push through. And then the next thing you know, you see the little flower come out of it. And the next thing you know, it's up. It's tall. It's got a stem. And now you see buds coming out of it. You know? The grow process. So, I'm going to end this I'm gonna end this video for now. But I just want y'all to take some of the stuff that I've told you all this time. And go back and look at some of my pre-existing videos. Some of the older videos. And let's start. Let's come together, y'all. And if you if you feeling this if you feeling this movement, like I said earlier, please like, share, and, and subscribe to my page. Um, I very much like that. I would love that because then I know that what I'm doing is actually reaching people, and I know that it's actually helping us to gain the ground that we actually need, man. Instead of, um, like I said a little while ago, when they know that you you got a voice. They're going to try to silence you. If you're not speaking in the direction that they want you to speak in, then they're going to try to silence you. And so, not only do I need the support with the likes and the shares and the, and the subscriptions, but, you know, the monetary support wouldn't be a bad idea. I've never been one to jump on anything and beg. You know, I never posted my cash up or anything like that. But here lately, I've been thinking more about it because um, that's another thing. A lot of times when we do have... People that think like I do, uh, the things that hinder them is the monetary support. You know, not being able to actually um, get out here and to spread that word. It takes money. It takes gas. It takes literature. It takes, uh, you know, um, you got to go to Kinko's and print up uh, brochures. and You know, because people, people want illustrations and things that they can see. Not only that, it'll help me to be able to actually create a studio and, and maybe get some real cameras, some real, some real, um, some real audio so that you all are able to hear me clearly and better. You'll be able to uh, hear me more than you see me because that's what all I really, I care about you hearing what I'm saying more than you seeing me. But I know that giving you an actual video helps to keep your attention span. You know what I'm saying? And so that you don't lose your attention and you stay focused. Um, so I said all that. And I hope that someone takes from what I'm saying and, and, and learn something. Because like I said, um, you know, they're going to they gonna push for the negative. Like, if you got anything negative to say about our community or you, you hating on, you know, just think, think like this. In the early 90s, they sued Luke for some of his content, some of the words that he said. They sued, um, was it Ice-T, I think it was, for the F the police. They 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 sued a, a few artists because of their contents. They said the, the language was too explicit, okay. Um, but then they came back and retracted all that. Why? Why did the music industry go from being, you know, uh, so so um, you know, how did they get so lenient towards our our, our verbiage? 
it was because they realized, see, at first they were afraid because they heard their kids listening to this stuff and they was like, oh my God, my child gonna try to act black now, you know what I'm saying? My, my, my kids gonna start doing this crazy stuff. But then they realized their kids were just being entertained because they had already installed in their brains, you know what I'm saying? Don't believe everything you hear, even though it might look good, don't mean it's always good, da 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 da, you know what I'm saying? The stuff we fail to, to actually teach our kids. Um, so, their kids are already mentally prepared for 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 the, the storms and the things that come with life, so that they don't have to react the same way that we will. Now, true enough, the sheltered lifestyle actually creates a more uh, volatile life as it goes on because you haven't been you haven't been uh, subject to the same things that somebody that's going through the struggle has. So your skin isn't isn't as thick, and that's probably why you see more of a suicide, you know, a higher suicide rate amongst them, which in our community is climbing now too, more than you ever would think. But that's another subject. However, I, I'm speaking in reference to uh, people like rappers, primarily rappers, because I can remember the time when they they, they deemed those lyrics, you know, too explicit for, for, for to listen to. And then they came back and they said, oh, it's okay. And now, you know, and then they start issuing deals. I remember when they were scared to give these guys, these, these street guys deals because they didn't want to go out here and get killed. And then they lose a lot of money. And, you know, they, they were trying to protect their investment. But then, you know, like I say, everything is done strategically. When, when they sit back and they realize, they do the math, they do the calculation, they realize, hey, man, I can profit more off his death. You know what I'm saying? Let them go out here and talk all this killing and dying and stuff. So they, you know. They know when you speak on it, eventually, more than likely, it's going to happen. Put a life insurance policy on you. You know? Give them a deal. Sign them to, you know, so we forever own his masters. And own the rights to all of his, you know, goods. And so his family will never profit off his death like we will. And that's why they're able to give you millions. Because they know they're going to profit billions. It's a, simp it's a simple mathematical equation. And we don't even get it. That's why I commend even rappers that stay independent like Dolph or Gucci Man, Because those guys already know their worth. And they, they don't need they don't need a systematic system to come in and tell them how much they worth and get them a dollar amount. And then, then, you know, 10 years from now, they only worth half of that. And the people that own the rights to all that stuff worth 100 times more. No. <clears throat> and that's how we have to think. If we're going to be individual, we got to think like that. And then we structure it. We get ourselves together. And then we come together as one. See? And it, that's why friendships don't last. And I mean, relationships, they, they, they go apart too. But relationships are different because there's a bond. There's a there's a there's an intimate bond, there's a there's a mental bond. There, there's so many bonds created through relationships, and I ain't even just even speaking all always about uh, the sexual bonds. I ain't always talking about um, the intimate bonds, but when you're in a relationship, it's the ups and downs that help you to 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 continue to go around. It's the it's the ups and downs that help you to continue to grow. Because you realize, oh, we made it through that, and now we're here. You know what I'm saying? So you look back, and you're like, oh. And that helps to, gain, that, that helps to give you confidence, and it give you strength. So that you continue to grow, continue to go, continue to elevate. That's the word I like. I like elevate, because that means to go up. I want to go north. You know what I'm saying? Been down south. I mean, hell down. I've been down for a while. It's time to go north. And I think if I'm given that platform one day, I hope to God that I never sway away from the feeling that's in my heart now and want to reach out and help somebody and teach somebody something that can help them teach somebody to do better and not only just do better for themselves so that it can help us do better as a community. But it starts within ourselves. And then once we leave outside of our comfort zone, outside of our homes, 
once we've grown and we've built ourselves up strong enough to go out here to spread the word and to get somebody else that same confidence that we have or we've gained, then we start coming together because all of us become enlightened. All of us, all of our eyes are open now. We're like, oh, you know what? Man, I've been down for too long. It's time to come up. Hey, hope all y'all stay up. Why do we and I wish all y'all the best. So I'm gonna turn my black man. back up. And I'll leave y'all with this for the day. Love y'all. Cyrus Jones. Y'all be safe. We don't go to y'all jail. stay up, good people. Come on.